Hello and welcome back to the course on our programming. This is Kirill Eremenko and I am super excited to have you back here in the course. And what are we talking about today? Well, today we will finally find out what is a vector. We've touched on vectors a little bit in the previous section of the course and it is time now to finally get it down pat and have a good understanding of what a vector is. In fact, this is going to be a quite a quick tutorial because vectors are not that complicated. Okay, so let's get started. The definition of a vector is a sequence of data elements of the same basic type. The way I imagine a vector is like a horizontal bookshelf with lots of sections. And in each one of these sections, you can put a number. So let's say in the first section, we put 50, second section, 34, 111, and so on. So basically, we're putting numbers into this vector. And there's 10 numbers, and this is a numeric vector. Numeric basically means either integer or double. So basically anything that has a number. So this is a numeric vector of length 10. And if you've studied other programming languages before, then a vector in R is the same thing as an array, for example, in C or C++ or pretty much in any other language. It's just called different. And the name vector comes from a linear algebra because uh, R is a statistical language. It's for mathematicians and statisticians. And there are a lot of concepts that come from linear algebra and one of them is a the name of vector and actually vectors are numerated because a vector is a sequence of data elements or in other words an ordered set it will always have a beginning and an end so in this case it starts with one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and notice the difference here if you studied other programming languages then indexation of arrays normally starts with a zero so in this case, it would be 0 all the way up to 9. But in R, indexation starts with a 1, which makes things a little bit easier, especially if you're just starting out into programming. Okay, so that is a numeric vector of length 10. Let's have a look at a different vector. Let's have a look at a character vector of length 7. So a character vector would have character elements in it, and we've already talked about character variables. So there's uh, letter Z, and of course it has to have quotation marks as any character value, letter F, letter, or the number seven, but represent it as a character. Because remember that a vector can only have data elements of the same type. So even if you tried to put in a seven as a number into a character vector, R would automatically change it for you into a character. So because it can't change a letter into a number, but it can change a number into a character, your uh, resulting vector would of course be of characters. And there's a couple more characters. So even multiple letters or a combination of letters and numbers in R is considered to be a character. So this is a vector character vector of length seven. And here is its indexation. Okay, so that's how vectors work. And one final thing I wanted to show you for today. And that is a little secret of R. Okay, let's say you have a number, you have a number, for instance, 27. And we've talked about variables before we've talked about values and uh, how you can store values in variables and so on and in fact the secret of r is that even a single number is stored as a vector as a vector of length one and there you go that is r's little secret and uh, we're getting a bit of ahead of ourselves right now why that is is kind of a conceptual thing in the background of r and we'll get back to it further down in the course but just keep that in mind that everything in R, even a single number or a single character, is always going to be a vector. That's just how this programming language works. And I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial. Until then, happy coding! <laughs>